and we are live. So I'm going to be folding a variation of a compound twist. I figured out how to make them isoarea. So I'm going to be doing isoarea compound hexagon twists and also a variation of compound triangle twists that you can only do right next to other compound twists. Um, so first we're going to start with the pre-creasing. I'll go over to um, my screen so you can see what I'm pre-creasing and get started in the middle with this hexagon twist. Now the pre-creases that I'm doing aren't going to be exactly what ends up um, on the paper but um, I'm going to do this is make all of the um, the creases from this side and then because it doesn't really matter which way I do it as long as I'm consistent about it um, yeah full disclosure it's the first time I folded this piece your sheet of paper so it could get interesting. So it looks like I'm going to come in from the top here and I am auto translating everything in my head um, to the right mountain valley assignment because half of them are going to get flipped anyways. So we're going to fold everything on this side and then flip it the other way later. And the grid that I'm working with is a 36 fold um, triangle grid on a hexagon, but it's rotated so it's not exactly um, not exactly aligned with the edges and in fact this black line is where the edges are going to cut across um, when it's extended all the way out. So going around uh, I see that I placed this line You gotta keep it centered. So, um, in this view, I can't see comments. Um, so I'm actually going to switch oh, the video view away from the crease pattern. Um, and just show you what I'm doing and my face. So now I can see if there's something in the chat and um, y'all can talk to me as well and I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. So now that I've got this um, hexagon twist, I'm going to go back over to the um, crease pattern and I'm going to count out. I'm going to need two, four, six grid divisions from the corner of the hexagon to the center of the next triangle. So two, four, six. Just making sure that everything is laying out how it should on the paper, even though, as I said earlier, I will be reversing half of these creases. And that's going to carry around all the way around the hexagon. 
And it will also lead to further hexagon twists once the creases from the triangle twists intersect. So now that I have that number, I am back over here watching the chat. And um, thank you to everyone who's watching live and also to everyone who has come along and decided they want to watch uh, later as well. So just going along here, counting out two, four, Six, and that will be the center of my triangle. And um, for those of you who may not have heard at the beginning, I'm using a triangle grid on a hexagon, but it's rotated relative to the um, edges of the hexagon. So you can see um, it's actually closer to a perpendicular uh, grid um, in that the grid lines are pretty close to perpendicular to the edges, um, but it's slightly shifted and the markings for the grid are um, three-fifths and two-fifths of each edge. So I'm going to be releasing a video um, pretty soon on how to make that grid, and um, that is something that I'm going to be talking a lot more about um, coming up soon. I have a tutorial that I'm making for my blog all about how to rotate grids, how to um, decide how much to rotate your grids, and what that is even good for. So. Um, yeah, rotated grids are going to be a big topic around here, and so I decided to combine them with um, the compound twists that I've already been talking about, and um, show y'all exactly uh, the state of the art here at Gathering Folds um, of what I'm thinking about and what I'm making. So this design I um, came up with would have been a couple of weeks ago now, um, but I hadn't done a full version yet, and um, it's going to look pretty cool, especially in this light color, so the backlighting will really shine. Um, and it's a... Um, variation including some of my favorite things, uh, compound twists and iso area tessellations. Uh, and I figured out uh, the other day when I was looking at the crease pattern, trying to figure out how to fold it in large scale, that you can actually pre-crease this pretty easily um, by doing the twists and then doing compounding um, without dealing with the iso ness and then undoing everything and um, folding it back with half the creases reversed. So it doesn't look like much yet, but it's going to look a lot more complicated by the time it's done. the chat if y'all have any questions 
our comments and uh, welcome to everyone who's been joining. And uh, yeah, this is my first YouTube live stream, so that's fun. done with this stage of the pre-creasing and then we can get to the compounding stage. Most of my compound twist patterns don't have any pre-creasing um, but since this one is iso area um, you do need to have all the creases in place first before you can start reversing them and um, Doing a compound twist in isoarea form uh, directly is even more of a pain than um, just doing a compound twist uh, in terms of keeping track of all the fiddly little creases and um, keeping everything in place while you're working. So. Um, This one is high, in, high level of effort intensity relative to the other compound crease patterns. And that holds for all of the iso area compound patterns. Okay. So I'm going to use my bone folder and go around here. And what you might notice is that all of these outer triangles are at equal distance from the edge. And that is only happening because of the rotated grid that I'm using today. So um, drawing the crease pattern is really your friend for these patterns, and um, or simply having the crease pattern. And so um, being able to look and say, hey, um, this pattern is going to have this kind of slope and it's going to look nice if I have this many grid divisions is something that can really elevate your pattern um, and make it something much more interesting. So what we're going to do here is compound each of the hexagons uh, starting from the center one. So I'm going to go two units out and drop that crease and go around and work on those. And so you might notice that while this compound bit is feeding into the next triangle, it's not really feeding into anything else. And that is intentional. Because uh, with making these things iso area, you can get some really interesting effects with the triangles and everything else. So now we've got the compound twist set up and ready to collapse. I'm going to make sure this flap from out there. And so just like with the squares that I was demonstrating, if that was last week, um, I'm going to start at the thickest portion of the paper 
to make sure that's okay first before going over to the thinner parts and squashing those. So sometimes I'm ducking under the paper to pull out or push out some layers that need to go in place. And I can also flip over and make sure that everything is properly aligned from the other side. So I'm making sure that, for example, this crease is actually on the grid line and isn't rolling over into something else. So that one's done. I'm going to firm that up with the bone folder. And so I've got one done, and I'm going to undo it to do the others. Now you can see that the valley fold here is actually where I'm going to make a mountain fold for the next compound twist. So that's one of the creases that will probably be reversed for the next um, or for the final form. So I'm gonna just twist going around. And so now I'm just going around the outsides and making everything compound. And then after that, of course, the favorite step in any advanced origami, undo all creases back to a flat sheet. Um, yes. And everybody loves hearing that one. This video will be available as a replay uh, if you can't stay and watch the whole thing now. And it'll also be available for you uh, when you um, have folded the background grid and want to dive into folding it for yourself. way to make these creases is just to fold the compound twist. Um, if you try to do these point to point, um, since it is something that you're going to end up putting in a twist, uh, I would not advise um, trying to pre-crease this point to point.
Another compound twist, ready to go. Here, I guess I can say a little about the history of compound twists um, in my folding and um, how I developed them um, and what I use them for. So compound twists are um, something that I developed a year and a half ago. Uh, so summer 2019 and um, I had been um, working on a smocking pattern and I was trying to figure out how the heck to make this thing that I had made in fabric that I couldn't quite figure out in paper. I was trying to figure out how the heck to do it in paper and so I tried several different options, and one of them ended up being this compound twist, um, which wasn't exactly what the thing in fabric was doing, but it was a good approximation, and it turned out to be a really interesting uh, method for producing origami tessellations um, in paper. And so, um, So I stuck with it, and I also developed the um, square compound twist. So the hexagon twist actually came first, and then the square and the triangle. And now I've even done um, rhombus twists and right triangle twists, but I don't have any full-size pieces with those because they use so much grid that it's kind of prohibitive to make them on this size of paper. Um, but I could definitely draw the crease pattern for them and um, figure out what kind of arrangements would work uh, without creating a super large grid to work with uh, as an experiment. So uh, similarly, the uh, right triangle twist um, just the patterns that involve right triangles tend to have a um, really long range uh, repeat structure uh, and compounding the twist makes the um, repeats even further apart. So it can be uh, daunting to uh, design things with those twists in mind. But uh, for the um, compound hexagons, there's a lot of different uh, uses that we already have for hexagons, triangles, and squares. So um, I have patterns similar to this available um, as crease patterns. And you can see more of them um, on my Instagram account. Um, and I'll probably do more live folding um, soon. And uh, my last live stream uh, on it, over on Instagram was on a variation of compound squares that used a similar idea to what I'm using now. Um, but this is kind of the next level. So those um, mixed compound squares were on a rotated grid um, and it also had a very long range repeat structure uh, relative to most tessellations. Um, but I like the hexagons 
And so today we're doing the next ones. So, um, yeah, th this form of doing things in live video is pretty new for me. I'm trying it out. Uh, let me know um, in the comments if you're watching this after or in the live chat if you're watching this now. Um, what do you think? Like, what, what are your goals in watching this? Um, do you like seeing the process, hearing about the history. Uh, are you using this as a tutorial to fold this for yourself? I'm interested to know more about you, too. <coughs> I'm also still learning how to talk for a long time continuously without constantly needing water. But we are halfway through the pre-creasing, and I'm going to get around to the uh, full collapse soon. Or I should say halfway through this stage of the pre-creasing, because the first stage I'm measuring independently. Okay. Two more compound twists to go, and then we're ready for the unfold and collapse. thing that's happening as we're going around is um, each compound twist as I fold it is reversing the creases of some of the neighboring compound twists. So we'll be able to see the um, isoaria nature of it uh, coming quite soon. them for other projects, but it's really not necessary for the compound twists as long as you know to um, smooth the thickest part first and then um, work out to the edges of the crease. to go. And then we can take the whole thing apart and go from the middle out.
So you can see here, you don't necessarily have to go around all of the edges in order. I started going one direction, but then I switched to the other. Really doesn't matter. Double checking that. And got desolation shaping up nicely. So that is the end of the pre-creasing. And now we can completely unfold the paper and start from the center. Go 
hexagon twists isoarea. And I keep saying the word isoarea, but I haven't defined it for you. Uh, sorry about that. It means the same on both sides. There is a more technical definition, um, but the important part for me is simply same on both sides. And so now I'm going around to each of the twists and writing the creases in the correct orientation. Since um, we haven't been chatting, I'm going to switch to um, show you my screen so you can see what I'm working with um, and how I'm thinking about making it um, in a better view. So you can see there are equal amounts of red and blue in the crease pattern, and these alternating mountain and valley uh, segments around the twist, uh, the even-sided twists, are what makes it isoarea. And in the case of the triangle twist, they can't be directly isoarea themselves, but you can see that every other one is in a different orientation.
to the last hexagon. pattern that uh, the mountain folds all end up with the mountains and then the valleys end up with valleys so I'm going to pull those into alignment Clothespins, folding aids of all kinds. So this is going to be the valley, the mountain ridge, and you can see. Now it connects over into the next one. Like this So this is the tedious part of folding tessellations. It's going to take a bit, but that at the very end, we're going to have the full tessellation. And that will be pretty awesome. exactly straight edges.
Jeez. Yeah. And you can see it's the same on the other side as well. And so now I'm going around, fold to fold, figuring out exactly where these things need to go. switch back over to another view. So I can check out. Ah, and we've got some comments. Uh, Origami Master X, welcome, welcome. Thank you for commenting. Um, thank you for your kind words. exactly the same on the other side. So, continuing along. Okay. 
kind of curious. What do y'all think? Does this seem feasible as something that you want to pull? I'm all about people trying new things and new techniques and seeing how things work and being able to make your own variations of whatever tessellation it is. So we've got a comment from Origami Master uh, saying it looks really cool. Thank you, thank you. Um, it's actually not as hard to fold as I thought it would be uh, from when I made my uh, sample piece to make sure that it worked. So that's a plus in favor of folding it. Yeah, re real selling point there. Not as hard as it could be. <laughs> but uh, it's true. This is not an easy tessellation. Uh, and it does take a lot of precision and a decent amount of time to fold. But I say it's worth it. All right, there we go. Now it's time to get uh, the bone folder and really set these creases in place. It's always a good idea when you finish a tessellation to go in with the bone folder and get things really ironed out. Uh, just make sure that the tip of the bone folder doesn't go under something and then you might end up uh, with ripped paper. That's no good. Um, but yeah, just really get in there. Some tessellations it works best to go from the inside out. Some tessellations it works best to go from the outside in. So um, you always have to figure out with your tessellation um, which way is going to work best for you. But do make sure that you get around to all the edges. And with something like this, I'm even going to, uh, when I flip it over, uh, use the bone folder on the opposite side too. And especially near the edges, you got to be careful that you're not introducing new creases when you go over it with bone folder. Um, but in the center, you're pretty safe as long as you don't snag any pockets. And then the tessellation will be complete. And big reveal, the other side is also the same. So I'm just going to go over everything with the bone folder. One of the really cool things about this 
is the only creases going off the edge of the paper are your normal grid creases. So there's no awkward um, bit sticking out anywhere and um, it looks nice and clean at the edge. And as I've been saying uh, throughout, um, one of the reasons I did this on a rotated grid is so that um, the edges are consistent the whole way around. So you can see that this piece of the triangle that's here on the edge has exactly the same length, the inner length there, as it does here. And here, and here, and here, and here. So that's the benefit of um, planning your tessellation from the beginning, from the crease pattern, and um, really diving into all the ways to um, make it as nice as it can be. And I agree with Origami Master, iso-area tessellations are super cool. So one of, the, one of the cool things about this one is you can see these big triangle points meet the back of the, um, the points at the closed triangle twist, which are analogous to their points in the center. And you see exactly the same thing here on this side. So uh, let me see if even the twists are the same. So this one, you can move your finger this way without catching. So twist up. And this one, uh, this one's actually twist down. So that's interesting. There are mirror images on the two sides. Um, but uh, yeah, isovary tessellations, tons of fun. And I hope you all fold your own. So thanks for joining me here today. And thanks to everyone who's watching the replay. Bye, and see you again later.